call the meeting to order since we have no public here. Um, how much of the formalities can we dispense no, with? Yeah, it's just a, everything. Let's just go to the first item then, please. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just this is a further discussion of the text amendments from the last week's meeting. First one is RC 11 03 to amend it to Chapter 64, Article 7, Division 5, State Outline Overlay District. So, um, Joe was kind enough uh, to do, make his edits on the soft copy, and I believe all you, I gave you guys um, a copy, hard, hard copy of it. Um, so I just wanted to begin with, I was telling Lynn today, I got to talk to the um, editors at Unicode just for a couple of things. Some of the bigger things that were in the edits. Um, the uh, capitalization issue, as you see, like um, we had said last time, it was just a consistent to be consistent with the rest of the code. Um, we, the city clerk and I looked through some of other chapters of the city code, whether it was environment or you know, elections or whatever, that always um, handled the capitalization the same way where it was not, titles were not capitalized, like mm -hmm. community development director or city manager or whatever. So that's just the protocol for our community code. Um, and then also in regards <laughs> to, as I was looking through, like in the preamble, the purpose and intent, um, and again, Joe made a good point, we just need to double check everything, but I do know like in the preamble, the division is a reference to what was the old ordinance because if you look, even though I didn't make the copy of it, the page or two before, it'll say division five. And so that's kind of like the old um, 12G or whatever, you know, the old chapter was called, but it's now called division. And so that preamble is kind of, you know, referencing the entire ordinance or that section of the ordinance or what we used to call the ordinance. But uh, Joe made a good point that we just need to make sure that it's truly just referencing the entire ordinance or really another part in that actual section. And then we can go ahead and, and keep that change. So, um, and then I will just make another note, just because I see it's on the first page, where he asks section 641071 through 641089 reserved. That's already in the, um, in the codification, so if we add even more sections, we use those reserved sections to add more um, more meat to it. So that's that's the protocol for reserving. Yeah, but part of that we yeah. talked about last time. You can't reserve to 1089 and then use 1087, which is the next section. In 1088 and 1089. Okay. We reserve them and then we use them. That was my question. Oh, okay. So you really can go only to 86 then, right? Right. So, um, mm -hmm. right, yeah. Okay, you're right. So I didn't take away the what we were already using, what we currently right. Robin, are all those things that you just talked about going to be fixed at some point, or is that something we're going to live with forever? Non-capitalization, you know, calling these divisions say, when it says section? As long as Municode's doing it, we'll have that same, we'll have those same um, comments. I mean, it, as long as you all are consistent in making your comments, that'll be the same comment over and over again, because that's what they'll do, is they'll go back and strip those back out. Why? Because they want to. Because that's their <laughs> protocol. So. And we pay them for that. Mm -hmm. Yep. But they are consistent. I'll say that. Okay. Consistently <laughs> wrong. <laughs> so how do you want to go through this round? Yeah, we will. Yeah, we will. I just <laughs> thought I would just preface it. Because there, there was some good um, edits and all that. So. I mean, with everything you just said, it... it I don't think there's any changes on the first page that Joe proposed that you just didn't undo. And then also the other thing was with my little mistakes with the fonts and then having like one, one um, space above or below, that will all be fixed by Municode because it takes a lot. We don't really have a Word document to do our editing from with all the money. That we <laughs> so I have to take a copy off the uh, document online, and so ever, all the font, all the not, the, not the fonts, but basically that's why everything's a little formatting, mm -hmm. formatting not adjusted correctly, but they'll all fix all that. So I don't need to <laughs> use my time to play secretary. So 
I mean, if it's a short section, I'll do it, but also it, it kind of messes up with my edits because once I change something, then I had a hard time reflecting the actual edits within that paragraph. So, um, so Municode will fix those little things too. Maybe maybe it would be best to Joe if you just yeah, kind of walked us through the things that you change that are substantive so that we understand why you think <coughs> there's a change needed and that way we won't misinterpret what you what you did. Well, apparently, a lot of the stuff that I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's go. Um, yeah. Uh, page one. That's done. Nothing there. I, I, if we have questions, do we ask them as we're flipping yes. through? Yeah, or yeah. ask as we're going through. Okay, and, and, and um, so do we eliminate the whole division section part of the discussion and say whatever the right answer is, they'll they'll work it out? Right. So, yeah. Okay. Um, th this may be cosmetic. I read it a couple of times, and I think it's technically correct, but it just reads awkwardly to me. The last sentence in uh, section 64.1070, um, the design review board shall make only recommendations to the Board of Zoning Appeals for primary variances. Uh, I think it's correct, but it, um, it, uh, it just read awkwardly to me. Because you swapped only from, and I, and I saw why you did that. I saw why you did that, but it just, the, 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 the right answer sounded so uh, if, if that's just um, not significant, then, then we'll move on. Well, I think we wanted to clarify the fact that they have only the right of recommendation and, and not decision. Right. Mm -hmm. so that was just emphasis on it looks like. Okay. I, I mean, and I, I struggle with that, believe it or not, but I think to to address your concern, if we take only and put it after the word recommendations, yeah, yeah. so the design review board shall make recommendations only to the board of. Or is it only well, for primary variance for only primary variances? It changes it completely if you put it if you put the only after recommendations. Yeah, you know, yeah, it does. Yeah, because is actually it, you're not getting what you want to get. Is it only to the there. BZA or is it only for primary variances? Well, it's it's only, only to the BZA and it's only recommendation. Only. Okay. Yeah. It's not only for primary variances. Mm -hmm. Oh. Because they also make recommendations for building permits for issuance of building okay. permits and demo permits. They only do courtesy reviews for your for our zonings and use permits. Hmm. Okay. How about if we said the design review board's <coughs> scope of authority shall only be to make recommendations to the Board of Zoning Appeals? Yeah. I mean, I was just trying to take care of a grammatical error. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, no, right. I, I could see that. Um, so you started with the, sc the scope of work, George? Well, I, the, I'm just adding words. I mean, I. I think if no one else has an issue with it, I'll, I, I could see it was correct. I don't think it. I think it, I think it's okay the way it is. I think it's the, for what we're intending for it to be. As mm -hmm. uncomfortable as it sounds, I think it accurately reflects what we wanted to say. Let's move on. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question. It's 1087. Um, I, and we we didn't talk about this last time, and Joe didn't change this, but A and B just don't read right. <laughs> Maximum setback for buildings less than fifty thousand square feet is yeah. required to provide. The setback is, is required yeah. to provide a hundred foot setback measured from the right of way. Why don't we just say maximum setback for buildings less than five thousand fifty thousand square feet shall be? <laughs> A minimum of? No, not a minimum. It's max. Shall be at the maximum setback shall be a thousand hundred foot measured from the right of way. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Just say maximum setback for buildings less than 50,000 yeah. shall be a hundred feet measured from the right of way. And the same mm -hmm. thing in the next one shall be 300 feet measured from the right of way. Mm hmm.
Everybody okay with that? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Joe. Go ahead. No, it's okay. Just anybody who has anything, just yell it out. Um, Sixty-four ten eighty-eight. Just, just some language there. Uh, Sixty-four ten eighty-nine. My question is: Do we need a definition of what an amenity area is? Because we say it's um, include but not limited to. Is there is there a better way to define what the amenity area is? <clears throat> and do we need to? I don't. I guess that's the question. I remember at the work session, you all struggled with that with the Highway Nine uh, committee folks as well. I mm. mean, it's because it's such a wide and very kind of diverse set of options. It's kind of you know it when you see it. <laughs> yeah, you know. I, feel and like I know that. how that is. I, 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 I get it. I just I don't I don't know of um. Well, but let's take let's well, we take it a step further. Are those we things that are example. delineated? Yeah, are those things that are delineated there defined? Um, sometimes you know, if it's in a uh, kind of a master plan development, yeah, it'll, if we require a pocket park, it'll show kind of a common area pocket park. No, but I'm saying within our ordinance, is pocket park a defined term? I don't know. So none none of these are are defined terms. Mm -hmm. Well, they are, and then we always, um, the zoning ordinance always reference back to Merriam-Webster's Webster 11th edition. <laughs> I mean, is there, is there... Yeah, defined public art at one point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> gonna, that, that. That's the one okay. we said you know when you see it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we actually did that one time. We did. I have a question about it. Did we define public art? I think we did. Mm -hmm. At one point, we had a very lengthy discussion about what it was or wasn't. Now, whether it made it into our what code was that? or not. <laughs> it may have been before you. Oh, oh okay. It was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I thought I would remember that. Yeah. It was painful. <laughs> <laughs> Do we say later on where that amenity area has to be? No. No. Because so it we could be in the basement of a building. Well, I think the intention is that it's outside for but public it could be. use. An amenity could be in a basement. Of a, depending on the definition, it could be a swimming pool. could be an amenity to the uh, to the building. And or it could be a public the, uh, amenity area. How's that? Well, that, well that, uh, that's where I was going yeah. as I was trying to come up with a an adequate definition. It's, you know, it's a, a, a benefit like to that. the external public. Yeah. Public? A public, a public amenity. But is it inside or outside? That's true. Well, I would think if if, yeah. if it is for the external public, it would have to be outside. Not Not necessarily. necessarily. That's what that's Fulton what County's um, government center was intent to be. A, but it never it's, it never facility. says for the public. It was a public natural space for the public, but it was inside a building. It doesn't with say that. Trees. I know, I know. I'm just saying you could have an amenity area inside a building, like you said originally. But it, I mean, it, it doesn't even say it has to be public. That's what I'm I know, but we're asking public. a public. We thought that it might be helpful to add a public amenity area, but now it's, would it be just solely we, we, outside? We can argue about the percentage, but what if we said for developments over a total of 75,000 an amenity here, uh, uh, sorry, green space of X percent of the total gross building area must be provided? I think we were allowing for it to not necessarily be just green space. It could be brick paver plaza and not necessarily have to be green space. It could have could still have public trees. Park area public with some open, benches. And open area? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or open air? Public open air? Uh, or amenity area? Outdoor. <laughs> you can say outdoor. It's you can say outdoor. Yeah, it's yeah. Pretty much you know that. <laughs> Well, out, yeah, so then if you say outdoor, does that include or exclude a courtyard? A as long as it development. doesn't have a roof on it. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to get through a door to get to the, I'm saying well, some purpose this way. So what do you mean, an, like an enclosed courtyard? Yes. Well, that's not public, that. is it? Well, that's where I'm going. Is, it, is that considered? I agree with you. I think it needs to be public. Yeah. And why couldn't it have a roof over it? Yeah, as long as it's not enclosed. Well, I meant like in his instance, if it was a courtyard and it was had a roof over it, then it would be totally enclosed. That's what I meant for his. Why, why couldn't it? 
Well, it could be just a... But you could have a courtyard that has nothing but a roof and four columns. Mm -hmm. Right, I it's know. not conditioned I mean, space is what I'm thinking, yeah. yeah. Okay, so space. by saying public, you then imply that there has to be an access area mm -hmm. that does not require you going through a locked door to get access to that, to be considered the appropriate amenity area. If I have a building, just take this room as the you know, example, and I put right in the middle of this a uh, 20 by 20 open area that, go, area that goes through the ceiling. Mm -hmm. You can't get to that unless you can come through that door after hours. Like a mall would be? Let's say yeah. where you'd have an open think about area. A, like think about a hotel you've been in. Hotel, got, yeah, you know, right. Yeah. And their, their environment, they've got their pool and their whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not a public area, but use that as the example anyway to think mm -hmm. how you want to think about it. So to be considered public, it would have to allow access without, you know, non-business hours, without having to go through a locked door. So an interior courtyard wouldn't count. It doesn't say that, though. Well, that's what I'm, I'm just proposing it as an issue. But, but even that, I mean, the public. Yeah, because he doesn't. doesn't it, doesn't define it as being open 24 hours a day. Right. Even right. the greenway, they close the gate so you can't have access. Or right now mm -hmm. it's closed because it's flooded, so they don't allow is public. It, is more uh, of it's know, closed? Uh -huh. Is more of it's closed as of yesterday? Uh, when I passed it over on Haynes Bridge, it was uh, closed. Uh -huh. I mean, too, I'm kind of thinking about, okay, for instance, <coughs> the, the intent here is for these to be managed by the development company right. or the leaseor, whoever that may be. We don't have a real problem with this now, but we could, you know, if it were completely open 24 7. They wouldn't. They may, we may have an issue with, you know, folks sleeping there overnight mm -hmm. and congregating where we didn't really intend for that to be. Don't forget so this, don't also, this also applies to multifamily housing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that it's least multifamily housing. True. So you're going to have, I mean, a potential issue that, you know, an HOA is going to want to own that, not make it public in mm -hmm. the sense of, right, and public for the benefit of the people who live there, but not public in the sense of anybody using it. Well, but is that the intent? I can't envision people going into, I mean, let's say that that one that we looked at last week was townhouses instead of single family. I can't imagine anybody driving in there to use their amenity if you didn't live there. But what, put in a business application or commercial, so it's 75,000 square feet of... Yeah, but that's, that, that's what I'm saying. If that, if that thing we did last week had been townhouses, it would have been over 75,000 square feet. What about... Deerfield Parkway. There are, are businesses that are set back from the road. They've got a semi-greenway area with the way they've done their sidewalks, so it's attractive to the surrounding town home and apartment <coughs> community. And, and this is and just hypothetical. So they somebody follows the drive up to the Verizon building, and there's a area outside of that so that should that be they should should they be allowed to be able to rest there in yeah. that and that's, that was my that was my point is mm -hmm. that I think it goes back to the definition you know is this intended to be open to the public in all cases and what does that mean does it mean just the people that are in there does it mean I can go there and you can go there and it's open 24 hours a day and you know it goes back to the definition is just it's all loosey goosey. Mm -hmm. Is it is a public amenity area? I think that's the intent. It's a public amenity area. For well, anyone. this will imply <laughs> that the owner has no control, right? I know a couple of This will imply that the owner has control? Is that no control. No control. Mm -hmm. Or, or say, limited, maybe it's limited control. Yeah, I just want to be clear about it. I'm not trying to right. tee up a, uh, you know, a contest, but if that's what it... Where did that, well, come, where did that come from? 
It came from discussions with the um, through the months that the state route nine overlay committee met, and so that was they wanted to try to implement having some sort of public spaces, public amenity areas on certain size developments. So that was the recommendation of the committee. I think there are a couple of issues that we maybe need to address in how we qualify the public amenity area. One is, I don't think the intent is that the city maintain or take over any of these. So, I, so secondly, then it's the intent that they're maintained and taken care of by a developer association, homeowner association, whatever, lease or, um, and that they're publicly accessible. I think is the intent. Now, whether that's 24-7, I don't know that that was it defined or that it was even an, an issue, you know. Well, I think the spirit of it, if I remember correctly, was for it to be, at the end of the day, viewed as an attractive um, asset to the community. Mm -hmm. so, to your point, whether it's 24 access, 24, I'm, I was only posing that as an issue just because I wanted to make sure we talked through that. That's a good but, so if it's intended to be a, a public um, asset that we see as another reason to think of Milton in, you know, in, in a positive way, um, how does that play into this? It may not be 24-hour access. It may, um, and it should be maintained by the the property owner. Culinary maintenance. Yeah. Um, I would just add that for consideration. Is that I think the original spirit of it was it was intended to be viewed as something usable by the community and something that would be an amenity that would be attractive to thinking this is a place that's different from some others. That's interesting because one of the things that they show in the design guidelines as an example of the amenities is the courtyard outside the old blind dog. No. <laughs> I mean, not 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 the courtyard on the other side of the wall, but you your in seating area. Oh, you're in the. Yeah, you can go. I think he's over. I didn't bring that with me. It's on page 30, if you've got it. Oh, uh, that's pre. Uh, uh, that's pre roof, right? Yeah, pre roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so what, when you put a roof on, does it still qualify? <laughs> well, I don't know. It's got a door. Doesn't it have a door? Yeah, no, it's, it's got a gate. Got a door. gate. Oh, yes. Okay, it's got a gate. <laughs> All right, guys, what are we gonna do here? Well, I, you know, I. There isn't anything to do, I don't think, until there's several questions that have to be answered, and I, you know, in. In view of that, I'd strike this section or or defer to till we get a better definition and what the hell we want, because I don't think. This section, as it's written, um, is certain enough to determine what's required. Mm -hmm. You know, to your point about the townhomes, we have a residential development, and does that mean that the amenity gets established and is open to the entire population to come in anytime they want and do whatever they want? I, I don't think that's the intent. No, I don't, well, think, I think, so. I don't either. I think, too, though, we have to remember that this will go through several hands before it gets approved. And so there, there may be several different interpretations, but there also very well may be several of the very same interpretation of what this means. Um, I mean, and that's every, everywhere from staff to um, DRB uh, to the final building permits and potentially even final zoning if they've got to go through a zoning consideration. Are, are so. you talking about in terms of how this might be applied, or are you talking, talking in terms in of the ordinance it, itself? Into how it may be applied, because it would, I mean, we're not going to, well, we're rarely going to go back and retrofit these things into an area, but um, what we're mostly going to get are these things built in the process of a new development. So? Well, we, we want to, we, we, we are inclined to want to quantify that a little bit more, mm -hmm. right? Okay. I mean, no surprise. Um, but I think the, the point was it was a concept suggestion. Who would, who would uh, decide if it was acceptable? You know, some sort of an insult, a little pocket park that's two inches by two inches. Or, you know, who would decide that what they were proposing was acceptable? 
If the no variance were, were If there was uh, no were, were variance required. or no zoning required, it would come down to my staff and I. Okay, so so it would come across your desk and you would say, uh, I don't, uh, you know, I, I um, what's the old pornography definition? I know when I, I, know when I, when I see it. it. I'll right. know when I see it. But the, the first part is what I was trying to remember. But oh. anyway. Um, can't define it. Can't define it, but I know when I, I know when I see it, um, and and you know I mean, you guys will do a fine job at that. I think um, uh, we're I think just trying not, to add yeah. some more structure there. I think it's not just staff, but even if there was no zoning, they'd still have to go before a land disturbance permit, and all land disturbance permits go before the design review board. So there's even an extra set of eyes that see. Even and if here's no zoning, here's my problem. With that. I'm sorry. And here's my problem with that: is you got a whole bunch of people that are going to be making decisions, and they have absolutely no basis for doing it. And so I'm a I'm a builder, and you know I here's my idea. I understand I'm going to do this thing for you, and I go to you, Rob, and you say, "Now it's got to be bigger than that." I say, "Why?" Well, because you know it has to. Well, show me where in the ordinance it says that. It's nowhere. Yeah, right. And then it goes. To before the DRB, and they said, well, right. you have to have um, this certain type of paver, and it's got to be uh, impervious, and we need uh, 10 sycamore trees uh, with black right, wrought iron fence around. Well, why? Well, because we said so. You know, it's not there. <coughs> well, particularly to, to Joe's first point, how, how many square feet were in Sembler, for example? Um, it's very, I mean, Target itself 200, is thousand? like 210, just the Target building. Okay, so, so half a million maybe in the whole thing, right? Right, right. This specifically says that an amenity area is required. So yeah. by the strict interpretation of this, all they have to do is put in one bench and a trash can somewhere, and they've satisfied the ordinance. And if it's public, then that means that at midnight, all the teenagers can go over there and you can't throw them out. No. Because it's public. You could probably run a pain clinic from the bench. So you, <laughs> so you, you don't want you don't want to overdo um, yeah. uh, the constraints because there there will be plenty of cases where something of higher quality that's smaller would be the most appropriate thing, and something that you know sometimes where you'd want more space or you'd want it. You'd want it spl physically split and scattered, depending on the you know the, the size. I I don't know the I don't know the answer to that. Well, I mean, and, and, and to carry it a step further, I mean, even if they put it in, none of the things that are talked about in B are required. It's saying if you do that, this is what you got to do. But you aren't, it isn't even requiring that those be done. I still think there ought to be some kind of a set aside percentage. Yeah. Whether, whether whether it's however we define what it's used for is a secondary issue, but I think there ought to be a requirement that some percentage of of, of the of the land that's in the gross square foot building area be set aside for public use if it's a commercial development. I would I would distinguish commercial from multifamily or high density residential. I don't know. I think you would want an amenity area, particularly in multifamily, but not public. True. Maybe not public. You know, I agree with you. I'd want, I'd want that, but I would want, in one case, to me it just doesn't make sense to, to consider that to be public. In the other case, it, it should be. Okay. Anyone want to take a stab at a percentage? It, it, we're, percentage is not going to do it. There's just there's so, many, there's so many questions here and so many things that have to be considered that, you know, I... We could probably spend the whole night just on that one thing, um, I, and I don't know how to how to do it other than to say, if we do recommend that this be accepted, um, to have that as a condition, except for 641089, which has to be further defined. I think. 
to your point, why don't we maybe put it to rest for the moment, move it up, finish with the document. <clears throat> if there's time remaining tonight, come back to it. If we can't get to that tonight, we figure out a plan to accommodate it. But I think for the sake of time, we yeah. might want to consider yeah, going ahead and come back to that. To your point, Joe, just to say for the moment it's on hold on that section. Okay. Um, next section, the same section under B, I took out the actual description of those items um, to make it more um, forward-looking to, towards the future when these manufacturers and their products are no longer available. We don't have to constantly go back to the ordinance and say, okay, well, now we're going to recommend this. It's of a type that's shown here in a color or as approved by the City of Milton Design Review Board. <coughs> <clears throat> Could we not just say or similar and name them? Because what we are trying to do is to get away from describing in its entirety that bench. And say or similar receptor. as approved. I'm sorry? Say or similar as or approved similar. by the city of Dalton. Right. Or similar instead of are provided. No, it must be the type indicated below or similar right. as approved by, yeah. But then do you, you put the descriptors back in? Descriptors. No, you don't need them back in. Uh, well, well, what does it refer to then? To the pictures. Pictures. Well, oh. Okay. So we're calling out the picture as yeah. the definition for the bench? Because they were very specific as to... I mean, they voted on exactly what they wanted. Which type of bench they wanted to see with these kind of slats. So... But there's a and difference between a, like a specific manufacturer yeah. mm -hmm. description and, and a standard, like we start talking about standard four board fence. Mm -hmm. That's a good definition of a standard that's out there. But to, to say Victor Stanley Classic, if you if you Google Victor Stanley, Stanley Classic, is it always going to bring up that? Bench? Some, some size of it or version of it, yes. That's why we were so I, specific. I just have I just have a problem with having so a company's name. I our absolutely ordinances. agree. <clears throat> well, we use Pantone colors. I mean, it, we use Pantone. Pantone. Pantone is a color are, chart. Are a, That's not paint. Yeah, but they are change. Uni are universally recognized. Yeah, but those are those are colors that colors. every paint manufacturer can use. You're not specifying a particular brand of paint. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're not saying the well, Duron <clears throat> Pantone color. Actually, chart. there are some. Call outs of specific. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but and there's other ordinances. I mean, I was talking to the building official. He was helping me on some of the lighting sections, and he also said that it was pretty typical. And he's been all over the United States where they've named actual model numbers of street furniture or lighting or whatever. So, but and that's why we said or as approved by the city of Milton. So just in case in five years if that well, if I walked gone, in there as a rep of um, John Smith uh, that had these same things, identical. I'd say, well, you know, who's getting paid here? That'd be my first question. Yeah. You know, is or it, the, this it is implied, indicated, implies it's implied that there's, that's right. It implies and I'd have bias. a problem with that. But I, 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 I think, I, think I, I, I don't, I don't, around it. I don't agree with that. As long as, no? the, as long as the similar is in there, I mean, it's well, no, not, no, I say it's, not an, it's not, it's very common in, in for architects to specify something specific and say or similar. So if you can replicate that, uh, you know, okay, I'll, I'll go along with or similar. Where <coughs> inserted? So you're saying leave the manufacturer's names in? Well, I, I'm saying it doesn't bother me if they're there as long as or similar is there right. because so then anybody the has the right to bring in anything right. that looks like that. And, I and <coughs> Because I think somebody was saying that there are manufacturers who rip off or sure. duplicate that same. Replicate. Replicate, <laughs> yes. <laughs> in a lesser expensive fashion. <laughs> Copy. <laughs> it's the highest form of... Uh, yeah, flattery. flattery. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> gone down, dudes. <laughs> All right. So are, are, are you okay with so they go back in? Similar? So the so just to be clear, the names go back in then. What we're saying? I'm okay with them going back in as long as the, the or similar is there. Is it or similar as approved or just or similar? I opening think, it completely up to the I would judgment say, of the. No, I would say as approved. Yeah, as approved. Absolutely. Or similar as approved by the city of Milton Center. 
Yeah, because I mean, really with the bottom line, what if you think about what we're about to do with Crab Apple, you've got Lou Oliver designing a different feel for that part of town versus any other. He he would not have to define another standard mm -hmm. for that if you say or similar as approved by mm -hmm. as long as they're bringing in something that would be area appropriate for the city versus something over at Target, which would be very different. So just to clarify, so after each A, B, and C, we're going to say, or similar as approved by the DRV. Correct. So can we get... Well, um, don't you say... No, no, no. Just say it in the preamble. That's what I thought. Similar. I mean, that's yeah, what's already that. there. No, or, the word similar is not there. No, but or 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 as approved by the City of Milton Design Review Board, and then after and each... And we want, we'll no, say, we want to say, or similar as or approved. Similar as approved. As approved oh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, ready to go on? Yep. Uh, 1090, I just added some words there to make, make more sense in A. Uh, in B. Yeah, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Should that say is required at the end? Well, what, help, us, help us visualize what you're talking about because I don't get it either. What's an interior property line? So, like, if you had um, multiple commercial developments or different ownership, but they were still C1 to C1, then that would require a 10-foot landscape strip between the two parcel or with, on the parcel. For instance, NTB on the Aldi's shopping center. Mm -hmm. That would be required a 10-foot landscape strip between NTB and Aldi. But this says non-residential zoning or use, which is the same thing. Yes, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it was residential. But it wasn't that wasn't that center approved as in, you're saying that the the NTB had to get a separate approval for that center, or was that center not approved as a single development? I don't know how it was approved. I'm just using that example as when a when a ten foot landscape it's strip like would a be spin required. Site. It's like one master. It's an out parcel. Like, it's an out, out parcel. So there's NTB and then there's three two other okay. additional ones. So instead of just being one big parking lot with nothing in it except for the, the parking trees, there's going to be a landscape strip between, at the property line. Yeah, but I, I guess what I'm struggling with is if I came in and did Sembler all as one development versus doing Target as one and let's just say Coles as one, just to, to, how does this apply if I do it all as one development? Then you don't have, I mean, that's all one ownership, so. Right, right. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't apply, right? Right, because it, it wasn't zoned. So that's there might be one or two out parcels. There, there might be one or two <coughs> out parcels on it, but for the majority of that development, it's all one parcel. So they don't have to put. Well, some good, look at what about Walmart? I mean, the Walmart on the corner has out parcels, but wasn't that approved as one development? Well, to be honest, that zoning was done in '73, so I don't know if, the develop, if there's a master development to it. But there's no zoning site plan that adheres to it, so. If there's different parcels made by different ownership, which I believe that's the case, then each each out parcel will have to provide a landscape strip at the property okay. line. Okay. Okay. Versus Sembler, where 90% of it is all one owns. And in fact, when we did phase one to phase two, because the first phase was approved in Fulton County, and the second phase, so they had to ask for a variance to delete that landscape strip because you didn't want a landscape strip right the bisecting right. the entire project. So okay. I guess that's an example. Um, I remember that. Mm -hmm. That was not a pretty. So, how should this be worded that it makes any sense? Well, By I think any? the point is it's not just a non residential zoning or you, I mean. I think you just add is required at the end of that sentence. Okay. I mean, does that yeah. clarify it at that point? Um, sort of. I mean, in A, we laid out the roads and references and all that kind of stuff, but then in B we just say 10 foot wide lines along Well, that's be yeah, because it's not, the property lines could be anywhere. We can't really define where the property lines are going to be, but that... But I, I'm, I'm still struggling with what that means, Robin. I mean, if, 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 if let's say Sembler comes in and, and develops that property, but it's made up of six different parcels, right? Right. 
Maybe this is to, this is saying that there'd have to be a landscape strip at every mm -hmm. property line for each of those six parcels within that gonna development. To, you're going to have to add a descriptor that says, in the instance of... Well, either that or just they have to come in and get a variance if they don't want to do this. Right. Exactly. I mean, that's, I mean, there's actually already a similar regulation in another part of the ordinance that, that where it dictates when it's not an overly district. Right. The requirements for a C1 against a C1, and it's, I think in that instance, it's a five-foot landscape strip against a C1. So you would have a total of 10 foot of a landscape strip here if you had two two parcels coming together that would actually end up being a 20 foot landscape strip. So let's just be really hypothetical and go back to the church that we talked about last time. Okay. Assuming that that whole thing was new. Would this require them to put a landscape strip between those two parcels? No, because that involves a non-residential use or institutional use adjacent to a residential. Where's the, where's the residential? Well, we consider the AG1 as a residential or AG. It's a residential one. zone, but it's not a residential use. Well, and that's why it says a non-residential zoning or use. So it could, I think, that use indicates that AG. Well, that's we're talking apples and oranges, but I mean. Why? That's a non-residential use. Okay, it's, you're right. And it's two parcels. It's two parcels, so <coughs> it would be required because it was. A non-residential use, or is it wasn't? I mean, it's AG one, but it's a non-residential use. We require a buffer adjacent to a ten-foot landscape strip along well, that property line. But in, in in that case, it would be a buffer. But okay, that's what I'm saying. You're you're using that as doesn't really apply exactly. I mean, the idea does, but not <laughs> the actual okay. what you're using doesn't. Okay. Um, but between. Chick fil A and whatever, what's next to them? Arby's. Right. And whatever else comes and in next Walmart to them. In between each lot. one of those and the Walmart parking lot, you're going to want at least a 10 foot strip in between. Assuming them. that they were individual parcels to Assuming begin with. Assuming they're individual yeah. parcels, right. right. Now, what, now does, a, does an owner have an option of combining them into one parcel before he applies for his development? Sure. So if right. he does that, he eliminates this. Mm -hmm. It usually happens in the reverse. They'll right. cut the parcel lot out. <clears throat> right. Because they want to sell it to another entity. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with just leaving it the same and then let them come in for a variance? Well, I think you still need to add, add the is required. Yeah, we can add that. Yeah. But I would put it in the middle, not at the end. I'd put it in the same place that Joe did. Landscape strip is required it's along required. any. Okay. Okay. Moving on. 1091. Uh, under C was just some language changes that I, I did to make it sound a little bit clearer. Um, 1092, um, just change the word dumpster to refuse collection. Do we... Oh, I see what you did, okay. Dumpster is a trade name. Right. Um, Three. I don't have anything. Um, oh, wait a minute. 1093. Bicycle pass. Okay. Uh, again, some li just language change. Instead of saying bicycle, bicycle lists, bicycles. Um, drop the uh, ADA requirement because it's already required. You don't have to say it. Um, just trying to keep the language standard throughout this thing, internal walkways instead of paths or walkways. Mm, that's about it there. Ten ninety four. I had some problems with okay. trying to figure out what these things actually were. Okay. So if we go down ten ninety four B it says, wall pack lighting shall be cut off down directional a maximum of 250 watts. I have no idea what that means. And I talked to the building official and he was just stating that that's for electrical engineers and when they apply everything to their lighting plans. So, you know, again, that's just 
the jargon for the, the type of profession speech? that it is. But that should that be in the ordinance though? Should we have if, we if want you want those, flight, then yes. yeah, yeah, um, and that's one of those where they'll try to skirt it just to get that additional attention from okay. the, uh, by lighting. Is it, is it 250 watts per fixture? Uh, yes. Yeah, per light fixture. That, that would help, I think, if it just said per fixture. I, I'm not. <clears throat> by any means an electrical engineer, but I look at this, so do we really run 480 volt lines for lighting? That I can't tell you. Shall not exceed. Yeah, but I mean, if lighting circuits are generally 110. I mean, even 220 you don't run for lighting. 480? We're running them. General, <laughs> I could go. I could, we could go back and check that with our building we, official as yeah, far as that goes, but I, honestly, I don't know. What, what is wall pack lighting? Those are the lights that you see. Um, you know what? A lot of They're times, on the wall. even <laughs> even Coles has got some on there. They're not a, exactly how it how it sounds. They're a wall of of um, fixtures. It'll be about three bulbs typically. They usually have a shield over them, square kind of oh, okay. pointing down. Okay. It's on the one. Wash <clears throat> the walls. That's about it. It's on the one on nine. On yeah. The, on the nine side right. of it. <laughs> but I don't know that 480 volts. No, I'm sorry, my mind's in the gutter. I'm, <clears throat> I'm reading in, in D that the maximum mounting for a pole is 28 feet. <laughs> George, <laughs> you're on <out of> tape. <laughs> that was out of character. <laughs> Very much so. Sorry about that. Well, in that same section. <laughs> Any fixture and pole located within 20 feet of residential zoning shall be a type 4 or forward throw distribution. Okay. And, and that's another electrical engineer term. That's what he said. That that's just and the intent there is simply to direct the light away from the right. residential area so that it's, uh, again, forward throw so that it's not um, dispersing it. For the, instance, if it's um, mounted at the edge of the um, commercial area so it doesn't disperse in kind of a, a circular pattern around that light fixture, but it's forward throw only <coughs> the commercial portion. The okay, and that, you know, again, I I just have a problem with a lot of this stuff. It's it's jargon. I don't know what's a, what's a term of art, and it is a type four term of art. It is. He mm -hmm. said, I have his writing for electrical engineer design. After that statement. Well, if it's a term of art, then it should be capital T, capital okay. F. The yeah, mini code won't reject that one. I don't know what they'll reject, we'll as, try it. as described in <laughs> why, whatever. Why, you know, why, why, if we're going to do that, why can't we go back to, like, the amenity fixtures and put a picture in here that says of a type like and, and We can't. I mean, that way everybody knows what we're talking about. All right, we'll find a picture. Picture. A fixture. Picture. <laughs> picture. Are you saying you want to put in fixtures that you're not supposed to use? No, the no, ones no, no. I'm saying give an example of what we're talking fixture. about. Okay. Instead of a, just saying type four forward throw, what is it? Just go back to the first part of that D. Don't label. I, I, which part? I, I'm not sure I understand. Mounting fixture be modified in such a manner that the cone of the light is not directed at any property line. Why do you not want the cone of the light directed at the property line? We're talking about the cone now. We're not talking about horizontally, but the cone. Because it will spill over typically into the property. So don't you want property. the edge of the cone to be directed to the property line? I mean, ideally, don't you want the, the, the limit of that light to be the property line? You that light cone? limits the question, the edge of the, you know, wh wh where it stops and the bleed over is what. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's the objective, is to contain it to within the property. Yeah, that's right. Containment, and that's uh, that's subjective. Okay. You know, I just think about that neighborhood behind Coles. And, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Joe. I'm all right. Okay. Um, and uh, just, you know, again, not to beat a dead horse, but I just I have a real problem with this section in that I don't, I don't know what it means, and I know it's jargon, and I don't think that belongs in the ordinance. But moving on. Um, that the box. Um, yeah, that's foot candles. Okay. So can you add that to talk? Yeah, yeah, we will do that. 
So commercial office and public, semi-public parking areas. Is semi-public a, a term of art to define somewhere? Well, I don't know that it's defined in our ordinance. But would that miss anything if we just took semi-public out? It probably, yeah, it probably is going make a lot of difference if we took semi-public out and just call them all yeah. public. Um, again, going to the bottom of that, shoebox, cobra lighting, neon light, well, I don't know what neon lighting is, but are those defined anywhere? Are they? Um, he every, said that, I mean, they're just, I actually have pictures of them, but at my desk, I forgot to bring them. Um, they're just, they're types of they're pictures. They're types of as pictures. Well. I mean, they're not, there's not a definition of them, they're just types yeah. of lighting. And they are, again, exactly how they sound. A shoebox fixture is a fixture that's got a square, what looks like a shoebox type shield on it. I mean, a cobra headlight, it looks like a cobra. I mean, you know, we can put pictures with it uh, just to yeah. maybe clarify. And then that, put a red, a red circle around it. <laughs> and say, don't do this. Right. But I think the fact is that people, anybody who's designing a shopping center yeah. or wherever is going to know what that means. Right. But I have a problem with that. This is this is a city ordinance, and Joe Citizen should be able to go to the ordinance and look and we'll see, put a see what it says and come away with understanding without having an electrical engineering degree as to what it is and how it applies. So that if I go down to this new construction and all of a sudden I see something that's out of code, unless I know what's in code, I'll, I'll never be able to do anything about it. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, all absolutely. this stuff, I have absolutely no idea. If I went to a place right now and they had, you know, 10 lights that were in violation of the ordinance, I don't know. Because I don't know what a shoebox is. I don't know what a cobra is. I don't know what a, you know, that's all I'm saying. That's right. We can, we'll get pictures. We'll put them in there and label them. Uh, moving on. Is it, is it possible for shoebox or cobra lighting fixtures to satisfy these other more physical criteria that we talked about, like the cone, you know, foot candles, etc.? I mean, is it just, is it, is it really just an aesthetic are we talking about, or is it? the type that throws off the types of light. Could it still meet those qualifications and still be a cobra or shoebox? I imagine you could still meet those qualifications, couldn't you, by the wattage and the type of lighting? So you have I, to put a lot more shielding on them to, to make them do what we're asking them to do. So, so to Joe's point, if it's truly an aesthetic that we're trying to manage, then we got to mm -hmm. put a picture in here that shows what yeah. that looks and like. And that's fine. Yeah, we can do that. <clears throat> but to the, uh, the point on my favorite neon lighting, <laughs> um, we could have we have right. You could have neon lighting inside a an enclosed fixture. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. do allow neon lighting for signage. I mean, so shouldn't we say exposed we in say front exposed. of neon lighting? Yeah. Wait, That's tell me where you the, allow it, Robin. I'm sorry. Where are you saying it is allowed? Um, in signage, you have channel letters, so it's covered up. I mean, mm -hmm. it could be oh, LED so or it could be you know right. probably more so yeah. the neon or whatever. Yeah, like the Asian. Yes. Scared you to death. But signs, signs aren't lighting. No, no, they're not but considered lighting. But but we're just giving you an example of what a closed closed set would look like, right? Versus but, the exposed neon. Okay. Uh, in so fact, your, your, uh, yeah. dark in dark fact, dark. we might not say the I'm same thing for LED channel kind of lighting because right. the, the latest is the LED channel lighting that right. nobody really uses. The, besides the beer companies and whatnot. Not very many people really use the neon lighting anymore. They're really using LED lighting. So we might not to mention that here, too. I mean, just as something we might consider so exposed talking, LED channel. But as George said, we're talking, I, I got us off because I was talking about signs, and this didn't have anything to do with signs. We, we did add LED up in C, Glenn. Did we? Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm Why do we knock out natural gas? There you go. Oh, <laughs> that came up in the work session, too. That was one of the issues that, um, well, they, they simply felt like 
number one, no one was using them anymore very much. I mean, I know that there are some subdivisions that are requiring them, mm -hmm. um, and um, that for commercial areas, they might be have some potential liability. And uh, I can't remember the rest of the discussion. Do you all potential liability on the part of the landowner? Yeah. If it, well, like I said, if somebody comes in and knocks it and starts a fire. Well, that's true of an electrical fixture. So like well. in, the, in Dallas mm -hmm. where they had the gaslight district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We would we would not allow that here? Not in here. Oh, I disagree with that. <laughs> it's you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a very nice. Yeah, they got it in the water. Mm -hmm. oh, so I don't it. remember us yeah. crossing that out. Savannah's got quite a bit. No, I think it was from the um Yeah. Well, We talked about it in the work session. I mean, it seems to me if that was the theory, then the fire marshal ought to weigh in on that. But I, I don't understand why it's been excluded. I'd put it back. Yep. yep. Okay. I agree. We can put it back. Okay. Can we just, can we just yeah. fix the I to be like we did uh, before and say we're some more? Oh, okay. Hang on before we go any further. So what do we say down on, uh, I guess it's, the new, the new G. G. Are we, are we adding the, um, what did you call it, Lynn? The exposed. L exposed LED. Well, we do address LED up in C. I forgot about that. So. Right. I put down. You want to do exposed LED? We could say exposed LED down in G if that's. And then exposed neon, or no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then get some pictures of the fixtures. That's what I've got in my notes. Ready to move on? Yep. Okay. Um, 10, <coughs> 1095. Um, I, we're just going to fix like we did the other one? Just to yes. Put it back in and yep. just say we're somewhere as yep. approved by? Yep. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Joe. Um, looking at the new... So, I'm sorry. Um, I is fixed by... Just open. say we're similar as approved by. But then master off a little bit different. Because they want to have them. They'll decide that. They'll yeah, that makes sense. Anymore, that makes sense. Okay. Oh, that's, that's uh, 1095, new E. Front yard fences shall be non opaque. <laughs> Don't know exactly what we're striving for there. No, <laughs> E. It's, it's the new the E. New it's F on yours, but I changed it to E to match what. That means you can't have a stockade fence. Mm -hmm. We're looking for open work fencing. So that four board horse fence, you need to be able to see through. <laughs> You've got to be spaced between the boards. I don't know how else to say <laughs> well, Four we, really we, wide boards. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but we don't care what it is as long as it's open. So it can be chain link, it can be four board, well, three board. Good. Picket, split I think rail. We say from well, we do have the restrictions on those yeah. else. Or oh. Do we? The mm -hmm. Don't we have restrictions yeah, on the chain do. link? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we do. Yeah. So well, if it's that, defined, then why do we say it's, not? It's okay. covered back in 1092. That's it. Screening and that fencing. Is. So why, why, why do we just not say? Front yard fences should be of a type as described in section 64, 1092. Because 1092 doesn't really prohibit opaque. If we're going to, we could simply say opaque fences are only permitted inside and rear yards, and leave it at that. Would that cover it? Good. Yeah, I mean, that would do it. But why not put that? Why not move that back to 1092? 
Move that little section. Yeah, instead of having it in 1095. Yeah, because it's we're talking about building materials and architectural design. Right. So I believe more appropriately placed in ten ninety two. Yeah, we can move it up to um, make it N under ten ninety two. Okay. Uh, 1095, the new G. I don't know what a hip is. A hip, a hip roof would be one that's got the front and the back that come to a peak with two triangles on either end that come to the same peak. Okay. More, very, very traditional roof. All right. Can I make a, um, I'm sorry, I'm still back at the other one. No, um, it doesn't mean cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say cool, I'm going to say cool. <laughs> can, we, can I go back there just to add something to our change? Say opaque fences are only permitted inside and rear yards, um, not adjoining a public right of way. Oh, okay. Yeah. That would work. Since we're moving it to the other side, the top of the right of way. So. Okay, 1095, the new P. Um, Hang on a second. Sorry, George. Um, so, in the case of the landscape business on Taylor Road, <coughs> not Taylor Road, what was on the yeah, way? It was Taylor. Okay, Taylor. 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 Yeah. They couldn't have their fence then, right? Not that's in the front. That's over the northwest. Well, no, in the side. They've got, they've got the. This is, a, this is the can't have it side and rear unless it's on a public right away. Right, and that, I mean, oh, I don't yeah, know. The what, secondary I can't street North is not a public right away. No, it still would be a public right away, but the, 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 the back and the other side would be okay. Okay, so. It's on a corner, right? Right. So the two sides that are on streets, here's public nine, streets. Here's here's Taylor. Those two sides would, would not his, be. Used. He had his building back here, and he had that, the drive, right. and wherever the fence went, you know. Right. So is this fence okay? Oh. So he has one, though. Yeah. It would, it, per this, it would not be okay. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. So the, the, other, the other one that's on the other road. This would, part's okay. And mm -hmm. the part behind would be okay. Well, there is no other road. He no, no, I'm saying there's no other fence. road, but, he, but the fence would be okay. He could put stockade on the other two sides if he wanted to. Yes. So in the future, in a case like this, he would have to get a variance for that, right. which we would want anyway because he was screening. Probably. Commercial vehicles. Unless, unless we said put a commercial, commercial screening. Yes. 40, we just don't know how many. Forty commercial vehicles. <laughs> a maximum of forty commercial vehicles. But we we might say four boards fine as long as you've got sufficient screening, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. To be taken on a case. But you're right. Maybe. He would have to get a variance to put up a stockade fence on the front. Yeah. Or on on a public right home. Yeah. Okay. Go, Joe. Oh, he, he did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he did go. <laughs> Hardy plank is, uh, is it's a clapboard. It is a it's right. concrete. Clapboard. I know, but it's, it's yeah. a trademark product. It right. is a trademark product. You're right there. So where where was that one referenced again? Hardy plank. Oh, P. P. Okay, so we can change that to cement siding. Well, you already got that. It says concrete. Samantha, wow. I mean, it, isn't Hardy Plank like or, saying Kleenex at this point in the industry? Yep. If I were Hardy Plank, I would disagree 100% with that. <laughs> so you say yeah, cement so siding? It's really fiber cement siding is what it's called. I mean, that's the right. non- Non-generic. Non yeah, that's branded. the generic version. Non-branded. Yeah. I think that's what you so it's so called. So we fiber can say cement fiber cement siding. siding. Yes, fiber cement siding. Mm -hmm. Okay, this uh, the chart down here with the colors. I'm I was just having a problem seeing what went where. Um, to the to the right, there was some words there, and they were taken out. So now I don't know what these black, white, greens refer to. Okay, it's like just creating a, um, instead of having accent and decorative elements only, we're deleting that. So all the so what ends up is that all these colors. 
the black, white, greens, browns, beiges, tans, whatever, they can be both exterior building walls, building components, accent, and decorative elements. So they can be, so it gives more variety they, for mixing and matching. Then you don't need a vertical line in the middle exactly. of it. Exactly. Right, and you don't need a vertical line and the, the, the title should go all the way across. Mm -hmm. But then what's the white, black, white? Well, that, that's when it used to be the um, So the second, and the second white would need so to be So we can just out. get rid of one white and then it would be and white black. and black. And black. And they should go below the line okay. then. Right. So, so, the, yeah, so all you get lines. rid of the lines. Okay. What did you say? So, no, it this has to stay in as a accent. Right. So, yeah, hopefully it will be a Okay. Um, I'll, I'll pay attention. This one's yours. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> On to 1096. 1096H. H. H. Oh. <laughs> So if you put a rack up that can take one bicycle, I'm done. Yeah. I like what, I like what you're thinking. It needs to have more. <laughs> yeah, I, I would think we should specify how many. Okay. How many do you want? Minimum of four. Agreed. Four, four racks four. or four spaces? Four, no, four spaces. spaces. <laughs> Are referring to the riders or the... the what? <laughs> So Minimum of four <laughs> single. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what I've seen this put up as two. We're live, don't forget. <laughs> was this public oh, this, the you smallest I've seen us require is two. Um, you know, we can we can require four. I think four is appropriate. If that's what you all want to go with. Yeah. Okay. So at least one bicycle park. With that implies that someone's going to ride a bicycle along Highway 9, <laughs> taking their life into well, their... Well, one day we can, hopefully. Actually, there's people, hands. there's actually over I'm at, being um, facetious, I, I, I know. That's actually yeah, one of those... We'll take that's one of those <laughs> <safer. laughs> Compare that to riding along Birmingham Highway. Or Freemanville Road. Highway 9. Or Freemanville Road. Or Freemanville Road, yeah. All right, 1097, uh, D... I'm not really sure what, what we meant there. Store, originally read storage of shopping carts is allowed without a permit. Is that what we really want to mean? Yeah. You don't need a permit to store shopping carts. So why is it in there? Just because we make you permit everything else, I guess. That you don't need a <laughs> permit to store them where? What? Well, I think no. they meant like those corrals. Mm -hmm. The corrals in the parking lots are okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Without a permit? Right. Yeah. So... Again, my question: Why put it in there? It's not. Hard. Was that a was that a rollover from like the Birmingham no, master plan, where we required them to be screened? No, I think it's just because this came before Birmingham, and this hasn't been. This was came over from it's nothing that I put in or whatever. So it was just the way it was worded. I mean, I guess we could take it out, and make that assumption. That yeah. You don't need a permit for it. We could do that. I'd rather not call it out to people. Okay. Yeah. Just we'll just leave it. it alone and maybe they'll make them prettier. Because I, I, to be honest, to be honest with you, Robin, to be honest with you, we talked about this in Birmingham. You know, the, the, we didn't we didn't view those corrals as storage. The storage That's, is what's up near the building. For instance, the new Kroger's are not new. The remodeled Kroger's yeah. at nine and Windward. They used to all sit outside, so they built a lean-to, basically, right. you know, and now they're covered. It's a solarium. So, <laughs> now, is, are we saying that's that is rough. or isn't okay? Well, that would, that would be a building permit. I mean, that's actually that would be attached, attached to the building mm -hmm. inside the building. They would have had to have a change in their building permit for that. But, I think, well, we, but I'm we, thinking we it's like a standalone storage. Mm -hmm. I, and I would think that that was the corral car, the cart corral, but I don't know, maybe I'm I, Then oh, I would say parking lot defined. I'm sorry, what? Are I'm you saying? saying parking lot to define it? That's where I see the store, corral or storage of so, cards. Uh, you know, so, I don't know. Well, I, no, 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 that's yeah. fine. So overnight, so, overnight assembler on their t target property could have carts out in the middle of the, in a, in a 
bay. They do. In the middle of the parking lot? They do. They do? Yeah. I've never noticed it. Well, they're ridiculous if they do, but I don't shop. They do. It's so different than the piece. The gates like Walmart has, the metal, you know, shoots. I wonder if they store them overnight. No, they don't store them overnight out there. That was my question. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm agreeing with you. Storage to me is where they permanently reside, which is targeted inside the building. Right. I'm sorry. That's why I brought up what I did. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm talking about okay. a temporary like, place after you get collection there, areas collection. is different than storage. Yeah. Correct. So what we're saying is that you want to take that storage out. Storage areas don't it, require a permit. Well, you you still it's a moot point. It, yeah. Well, it doesn't require a permit. It no. doesn't belong. I think we yeah. take it out. Yeah. Okay. I vote take it out. Okay. E. Um, I just changed that a little bit so we're not specifying things that. Are limiting this thing. That, I mean, the bottom line is you have to you have to get a permit. Are we talking here about permanent versus temporary? I mean, if if, if I have a side one of a sidewalk sale, do I need to get an administrative permit to do that? Yeah. I mean, is an administrative permit the appropriate designation for that permit versus somebody that you know has an outdoor garden area and therefore has stuff displayed outside, permanently well, displayed outside? They're not supposed to have them permanent. So Walmart's not allowed to have plants, and Home Depot's not allowed well, to have plants. Well, they can plants. have it in their garden center. But no, they, they have my the garden yeah, center so defined as yeah, what? Is what's in the it's okay. enclosed in the building. The Better center. example yeah. might be Kroger. You Kroger. know how they come out in front of the yep. right. mm -hmm. on that sidewalk right. with plants. Well, so and they probably the move them in at night. And, yep. Well, but Walmart, you know, Walmart, Home Depot. Yeah, don't. I know. I know. Yeah, they're, they're really not supposed to be doing. It. Okay. So, so, so the, the intent, I'm sorry. No, the, so the intent is whether it's temporary or permanent, they would yeah. need a permit to do that. Okay. And is okay. the, is well, the permit have a well, never. It, has, it has a length of time. It's impossible. So you're going to grant Home Depot a permit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come if they're going to be appropriately permitted. How long does that permit last for? Mm -hmm. An unspecified amount of time or, or 1608, excuse me. Yeah, you know, the other example of yes. the Birmingham Crossroads, the the you know the store that constantly turns over, it's now turned over again, and it, yeah. it looks like it's empty again. The produce, and, the produce market. Yeah, it's gone again, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the old Bice's yes. store. Yeah, yes. exactly. it's gone. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's too bad. It was kind of. It's really too bad. Adding a nice little feature there again. Well, how about? Well, how about uh, looks like there are a lot of stuff in It's back. interesting what's because you say the, what's the name outside of the, the interior or permanent nursery and shelter oh, portion. Yeah. So at it's Kroger, certainly has stuff displayed outside all the time. They could continue to do that because it's shelter. Shelter. <laughs> That's true. So I don't know. I mean, I think it's okay personally. But well, that's a good point. I mean, it's all over the place. Yeah. Literally. So basically, the uh, seasonal business use—that's the reference. Mm -hmm. um, 1608 is for shall be issued for the same seasonal business use. More an administrative permit shall not be issued for the same seasonal business use more than once in any calendar year. Said seasonal business use Canada must Christmas correlate twice. to a calendar, holiday, or event. Said permit shall not exceed a total of 30 consecutive days for each use. Said permit must be posted on site such that it is visible from the street. An application for said permit shall be made no less than 14 days prior to the event. Example, one permit may be issued for sale of Christmas trees. But, so 1608 only applies to seasonal displays? Right. Yes. Seasonal business use. Right. Is that they wouldn't be out there all the time. So. <clears throat> so, good luck enforcing that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Bice's store that had um, produce. bird feeders mm -hmm. outside. Produce would be seasonal. You know, you would only have pumpkins probably near Halloween, you only right. have whatever. But a bird feeder might be year round. How do they, how do they get approved for that? <laughs> Because it's not going to be. Never asked. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I know I'm not asking, but I'm yeah. but I'm saying theoretically that would be something that we would want to allow, because <laughs> it's in keeping with yes. the ambiance of the area. Pardon? 
Would we in Highway 9, though? Because remember, we're just talking about Highway 9. Oh, I know. Nine. But, you know, what it's, if it's... Lawn cars. What if uh, Katie's Car Wash wants to have sham wows outside all the time? <laughs> Is that something we want? I, I would like one. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. They're not on the car. I'm being facetious, but you no, know what? You can, um, you would have ever buy a violation of this one. They would have. Another. They'd have to get an exception that would I mean, be accommodating their longer period of time for that. Every time they go to decide to take something out, they <clears> got to decide whether they have to go get a permit or not. But if we don't, I mean, we leave them in, but I think it's... If we don't address it, though, and we have somebody abusing it... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for it being there. I just want to make sure yeah. that we... Uh, it's, I don't disagree with it, but... Okay. So, like the... Uh, it's not there anymore, but the John Deere guy... Yeah. ...would be an example where he would... That's not a seasonal... He had set tractors well, that he was here right on. I think Home Depot and Lowe's do that, too. They don't bring those tractors in. They don't just chain them together. They have a big, the, yeah, they have a big cable. Yeah. Absolutely. Winter or summer. As long yeah. as it's sheltered, though. They're not. They're, they're not. not. Yeah. They're right out in front they're of the building. The overhang? Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Sidewalk. So they really should have a permit. Mark's, Mark's that's one of those, yeah. Well, that's one of those. That, you know, how do you how do you also determine whether or not all of that was grandfather? That's, a, that's grandfather. What well, would be? You know, I mean, well, we had pictures of it all when we signed the city into being. What? Okay. But you can't yeah, enforce it against one and not the other. Exactly. I, well, I understand that, but I'm just saying they're going to claim their well, grandfather, and I've got no way to prove that they're not. <laughs> and the likelihood is they probably oh, did have those out oh, there. Were they the same ones? No. Allowed. So, so <laughs> NTB better not it's display not any tires outside their building. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, make that go. Oh, that's Unless you put one of those back. back. No, that's a good yeah. point. What did you say, George? I said NTB better not display any tires outside their building. Exactly. I do. I, I mean, I because know. Because it's you. being done right now. Not. It's a coffin. Yeah, especially when they've got, no, sorry, you know, no, when you go there, they've got a second. Yeah, they, but they still shouldn't be storing inside. tires, yeah. whether they were built before yeah, us. That's right. That's They're important. just using the outside, isn't it? But if they got a display, buy one or buy three, get one free, or don't stack them outside. Well, I, we don't. But that that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, right. Yeah. It's going to be one nightmare to enforce because right. you don't yeah, know when it, it started, what yeah. it is, or anything. That's all I'm saying. Next. <laughs> okay, I'm on to 1100. Uh, some of the changes there just just were changes. Um, third paragraph, last sentence: the inherent qualities existing at Deerfield. Deerfield is defined by the geographical map, right? On page 18. Yeah. Page 18. Mm -hmm. Well, it says Deerfield overlay. So why do we say the inherent qualities existing within the Deerfield overlay? Yeah. Um, you got that, Robin? Within the Deerfield overlay. Yeah. 